Hello traders, this is John Kickletter, Chief Strategist for DailyFX.com. Over the past five trading days, the active week that we've had, I've had a lot of questions that are approximately of the same uh, type. Generally, I have XYZ position and I am concerned about holding this uh, this exposure given the, you know, whatever the major fundamental concern is for that particular currency pair or asset class. And this brings up a very important consideration because, yes, our markets are growing increasingly volatile. This is especially true of the FX market. We compare the FX volatility and how that has preceded a lot of other asset classes. I think that this is pretty universal and it's shaking uh, a sense of complacency that I think will more fully uh, unwind in the future. And we are certainly seeing the kind of markets where they are much more aware of their complacency. They're much more concerned of what it can uh, render from the market. We've seen too many extreme moves. Here's the S&P 500. Too many extreme moves arise out of uh, seemingly the blue. And this puts a lot of people at disease, as it should. There is considerable risk here. It is not a slow moving uh, start from a cold engine. All right, this is a market that can very easily, very readily see dramatic shifts that could seriously damage an account that's not closely watched. But I do want to cover more of the uh, aspect of should I really completely change my view of the markets, completely take off trades or stay fully away from trades because of event risk that is uh, ahead of us, whether it be uh, definable, discrete, or whether it be just a general concern that's out there amongst the markets or in our own mind. So that's going to be our f the focus of our uh, strategy video for this weekend, and I'm going to use a number of examples of big topics that regularly come up on this particular theme. So the first thing that we need to establish when we are deciding whether I should be far more concerned about this fundamental uncertainty that faces whatever market I'm in is the consideration of whether it is uh, first uh, what I would call discrete or definable or if it's vague. All right. Definable is essentially you know the time, you know what the context is, you know that there is an event or a piece of data, uh, and the scenarios, the outcomes, are relatively straightforward. They are, I would say, black or white. All right, Pretty clear-cut case. Vague, on the other hand, is just as you would expect. We don't really have a clear time and or we don't know exactly how many scenarios that uh, can arise from a situation and thereby becomes very difficult to establish how I can trade in a just quote unquote good or bad outcome. There is a, too much complexity, too much nuance to this and sometimes the vague also essentially water themselves down in terms of impact, but there is also a great chance that it can be market moving no matter what, and its vagueness actually complicates uh, this to a much more extreme level, meaning it's going to be very market moving and we don't know how to prepare for it because we don't know the, the particulars of it. All right, Now, with those two uh, approaches in mind, we need to, th need to think in terms of how can I measure probability versus what kind of impact will these different scenarios for the probabilities have. All right. This is very important. I always uh, establish fundamental concern and uh, many of my trades actually on the foundation of what's the probability of this certain outcome and what's the potential of it. So if you want to look at it in trading terms, what's the probability it's going to go in my favor and how far will it go? What kind of profit can I expect to take if it does go in my favor and vice versa? If it, what's the probability going out of my favor, moving against me, and what is the uh, impact that's going to uh, be held on my account if it does go against me? So probability and potential or impact, I think, is uh, more readily uh, accessible to most. All right. Now, in terms of definable events, let's say I'm looking at the possibility of risk aversion. All right, and this is the S&P 500. I think it's a very good measure of risk, uh, risk trends. Let's say that uh, the possibility of risk aversion is tangible, but let's, let's measure it in a particular 
means. I see three outcomes here that we break down on this head and shoulders uh, neckline that is risk aversion, that it bounces in a significant way and starts to make a move towards record highs, or it just kind of flounders. All right. Now, if you are a risk-oriented trader, you would say, all right, well, the risk to me is that it breaks the downside. What's the probability? Well, after an extended period of congestion that you see here and the meaningful range that we've established over the past year and a half, I think the probabilities are certainly better than even. So that is a quite substantial uh, probability. Then I would say, all right, in the event of risk aversion, what is the potential? How far can it go? How quickly can it go? And that impact is quite significant because it can spur something that essentially lives far beyond just the U.S. equities uh, and its own performance. It could spur risk aversion, which would be a very dramatic feedback loop. All right, so potential high of risk aversion and the impact very high, very broad, maybe perhaps uh, a little bit lower in intensity because we see it coming, but it certainly is a high potential, high impact scenario. And yeah, you would be concerned about that kind of exposure. You'd be concerned about the risks that you are uh, exposed to. Now, in contrast, we can have the vague. All right, the vague time, it's not clear what the worst case scenario is. It's not clear when it's going to happen. And it can be incredibly difficult to plan a trade around and avoid the risk to our existing trades that uh, could have an impact from that, whatever the theme or scenario yeah, scenario is. So let's say that I'm looking at, uh, I don't know, what's uh, both a vague time and a vague uh, play out. Emerging markets, how about that? We've heard quite frequently the risk uh, that emerging markets, and this is the emerging market ETF, all right, that emerging markets can cause a global, uh, essentially, financial pandemic, that the souring loans in this rapidly expanding sector of the global economy could suddenly turn into a catalyst for risk aversion, and the impact to growth, the impact to financial stability, the impact to the avail availability of funds would be tremendous. Uh, so, yes, we know that the impact here is quite profound. The probability is that this happens, uh, at least over a longer period of time, is also high. But the timing is completely vague. We don't know when this is going to turn into a uh, systemic issue. There's no specific date. There really isn't only one event that I would say uh, reasonably can be expected to trigger such a uh, broad concern. So in preparing for this, I really cannot establish a clear time. I cannot establish clear scenarios, all right? because timing and scenario analysis are going to come hand in hand. All right? I know the impact will be quite severe, but I really cannot prepare for it. So in terms of my trades, let's say I'm trading risk-oriented assets uh, like equities or maybe I have uh, the yen crosses. Maybe, uh, well, the risk aversion would actually help out my dollar yen short, so maybe it's a, bad, a poor uh, example. But perhaps you have a hypothetical long view on one of the commodity cro yen crosses, like a kiwi yen. Maybe you're trading the range on the kiwi yen. Would this be necessarily something I am imminently concerned of? Will it encourage me to uh, exit all positions and to sit on the sidelines and not take any other technically oriented Kiwi in trades because there is a very substantial probability emerging markets can turn into a crisis and can in turn hit the yen crosses as risk influence? No, because I can't see something that would reasonably trigger such a move. This is such a big theme, all right, and it entails a lot of the market. It's not just a small uh, unified sector. It's not a small economy that can all that can turn on the flick of a switch. This is something that would be kind of like a slow mo uh, slow motion car crash. Even the housing crisis back in the great financial crisis was a slow moving car crash. We could see it unfolding. Lehman Brothers was certain an accelerant uh, or acceleration point, but it was not all of a sudden. All right, so I wouldn't step back from tactical trades 
uh, even tactical long risk trades on yen crosses when the opportunities arise, and I didn't think that there was something imminent that would shake up risk. But I would not uh, just sit around preparing for this risk. Now, long-term, long-risk exposure, yes, that's something different. I wouldn't take a long-risk exposure and be completely ignorant of the emerging market crisis. All right, so that is the example of a far more vague situation. Now let's look at some of the other ones that I think are popping up very frequently, and I'm sure that you have probably at least one concern related to these. One of the most frequent ones that comes up, and I can understand why, is the Brexit. All right, the fear of the volatility that this can spur is well warranted because, as we've established a number of times, the Scottish referendum, the lead-in and the result, uh, as well as the UK general election, uh, the lead-in and the result, had dramatic volatility from the British pound and all the pound crosses. So this is certainly a well-established risk. It also has very definable circumstances. I know exactly when it's going to happen, June 23rd. I know very clearly what the scenarios are. Either it is stay or leave. Stay or leave can have a very readily uh, impact on the pound. A stay vote would probably see the pound rally substantially, unless we had fully accounted for a stay because the polls were so clear and it's already been priced in so it offers nothing. A leave vote would lead to a substantial drop in the British pound and just to be wary here, a substantial drop in the euro. Right. So those are really straightforward scenarios. The time frame is very straightforward. Yes, I expect some volatility leading into it the weeks preceding the actual vote. But this is not something where I'd say, oh, well, I have a pound exposure going heading into the weekend, and I'm really concerned that I'm going to have a huge definable trend uh, that's going to establish itself suddenly on the open on Monday. That's going to be a much lower probability. Now, it can happen. I'm not saying it can't but it would be much more difficult to generate, given that everything in this scenario is pretty straightforward. All right, so if you're short-term trading pound crosses and this is your imminent fear, especially over the weekend, perhaps not the most uh, uh, pressing concern. How about something that's going on over this weekend? All right, the G7. We know the G7 meeting was on Thursday. It has continued through Friday, and now we're going to go into the Saturday ver uh, end uh, of this meeting. This is a weakened risk. All right. The situation is definable in terms of time frame. Obviously, Saturday is the wrap-up. The scenarios for which it can impact the market are not particularly clear. We know a number of con uh, concepts are going to be coming up. Uh, global growth and the focus on that growth, uh, the FX uh, impact of monetary policy and efforts, direct efforts to, to move currencies. All right, we're going to see concerns over divergent monetary policy. We're going to be seeing concerns uh, over uh, other manipulations, also lesser things uh, uh, according to a trader's perspective, like the Panama Papers and such. But the big issues that we have in the G7 is uh, acknowledgement and uh, repercussions for currency war trading uh, and or coordinated monetary policy. The probability of this happening, however, is low, significantly low. The impact that it would have if it did come about, let's say, uh, talking about currency wars and reprimanding a country for currency wars, or uh, talking about a coordinated monetary policy, or even saying that co uh, policies are going to skew even further, that can generate more volatility across the markets from uh, the likes of uh, e equities and the dollar and the yen crosses. It could also have some pretty profound influence on gold as a haven to the uh, financially unstable. So it, it would have a very high impact. The scenarios are somewhat vague, but the likelihood that it happens is very vague. Now, th given that this is a weakened event risk, I would consider taking off trades that are short-term oriented, that are specifically in those that are most sensitive to what they would talk about, the uh, high-profile concerns. Yen crosses, 
short-term yen trades uh, held into the weekend, those are at risk. Uh, the very sensitive to risk trends uh, through the weekend, uh, and especially if you're a short-term view, so if you're just trading the descending trend channel here on the S&P 500, that's probably going to be too risky to hold into the weekend. That's too narrow of a stop that that would entail. Uh, and the yuan. All right, so if you're one of the people that actually trade the USD CNH, I would definitely take that one and that risk into consideration as it can definitely sh uh, shake this up. Now, as for currencies like the Aussie USD and the like, yes, it can impact these currencies, uh, but only uh, in very clear and decisive uh, outcomes. All right, very dramatic outcomes, and I would really con be most concerned about in very short-term trades. Medium to long term doesn't really factor in that much. Since we're talking about China, uh, China is a constant concern for many of the policy groups out there, uh, and it actually does in terms of uh, the risk. Uh, obviously, we can have uh, two uh, sides of the risk. Uh, and remember, risk is not a negative outcome, it just means volatility and uncertainty. Uh, two things that can happen with China. One, they could admit to a serious uh, financial problem or economic problem. The likelihood of that, extremely low. Extremely low. Uh, and they would not likely state that over the weekend. So I wouldn't worry too much about that scenario. I would definitely consider that something akin to a black swan, even though I'm uh, certainly dubious of the health of China. Uh, but the alternative is if the Fed, or sorry, the Fed, the PBOC announces a policy change, all right, so stimulus. That actually happens quite a bit over the weekends, and it does maximize big impact on the market uh, and with a significant influence typically on risk trends, but also in currency pairs like the Australian dollar. Now, the impact has actually dropped uh, with the most recent iterations. So incredibly vague the scenario analysis is relatively clear but the impact is uh, tapering so would I take off a risk oriented position or Aussie position in the uh, fear of a uh, China change probably not another one BOJ all right they talk intervention constantly although I suspect that they're definitely gonna back off on that around the G7 summit the summit's actually next week. The uh, meeting is this weekend. Um, so finance ministers versus the leaders. Intervention. All right. Vague risk, certainly very probable, given that we have seen so many uh, threats being made. And uh, when I trace out the probability, I also have my intervention risk uh, standing table. And yes, I put the BOJ at the very high end. I think it's a high probability. Uh, but the issue is not necessarily the probability, but the impact. I've shown numerous times that st uh, intervention, yes, it can have a serious impact here. But at the same time, it is a day long, and then it starts to unwind almost immediately afterwards. Now that's a huge problem if you're talking about a very short-term trade. That is not so much a great concern on the medium to long-term trades. And what's the probability to do this over the weekend? Well, from a strategic standpoint, the Bank of Japan probably wouldn't want to do that. All right, That would lead to what we call a flash in the pan scenario, where there's a sudden move in the yen, and like it has done in the past, it is a completely faltered move immediately afterwards, which is actually the scenario that we had with the introduction of negative rates. One day of response, and then subsequently it unwinds. You don't want a flash in the pan response. You want a slow buildup. All right, so a weekend effort is unlikely from the BOJ. So I wouldn't be too concerned about this with weekend exposure. However, if you're trading short-term yen crosses, do be mindful, especially if you have a, uh, let's say, a dollar yen or a euro yen or a pound yen short, and there's a big move in your trade in your favor, the probability of intervention is going to rise substantially. So these are just a few of the things that I think uh, come up very frequently. And realistically, these are also some of the headlines, the most popular headlines, the Brexit, the G7, China, BOJ intervention. And uh, we can also say the Federal Reserve, but doing the quick analysis, we know that rate decisions on June 15th, that's much further uh, ahead. We also know that it moves with milestones, so Fed speeches. So we can track it out relatively straightforward, and it's not an enormous surprise, and only recently has it become more market moving. 
we can see these things and establish, all right, what's the probability uh, that uh, these various scenarios happen, and what's the impact if they occur. With that combination, I can see, is this too much to uh, consider a short-term or medium or a long-term trade? Should I uh, avoid it at all costs? Should I get out of exposure? Should I even uh, get out for weekend exposure because there's too much risk? Well, this is a, a good way to boil it all down and make that evaluation. All right. We will wrap it up here. I will be out for the first couple of trading days next week, so we will do our first trading video on or strategy video on Wednesday. Until then, I wish you good luck trading out there and a fantastic weekend.